In this video, we are going to talk about the existential quantifier. The existential quantification of P of X is the proposition there exists an element X in the domain such that P of X. We use the notation there exists X P of X. This symbol is used for the existential quantifier. Note that a domain must always be specified when a statement, there exists x, px, is used. We can express existential quantifier in many different ways, such as, there is an x such that p of x, or there is at least one x such that p of x, or even, for some x, p of x. Let's see how this is different compared to the universal quantifier. As we've seen earlier, a statement with the universal quantifier is true when p of x is true for every x. If there is one, just one x, in the domain for which p of x is false, the entire statement is false. In contrast, a statement with the existential quantifier is true if there exists an x, even if it was the only x for which p of x is true. The statement is false only when p of x is false for every x in the domain. Let us take this example. Let p of x denote the statement x is greater than 3. What is the truth value of the quantification there exists x p of x where the domain consists of all real numbers? The solution is obvious and straightforward. Let's write it down. x greater than 3 is true in some cases and false in other cases. For instance, when x is equal to 4, x greater than 3 is true, and hence the existential quantification of p of x is true. Notice that p of x can be false for other values in the domain, but according to the definition, if p of x is true for at least one value in the domain, then the entire quantification is true. If all elements in the domain can be listed, like x1 and x2, all the way to xn. The existential quantification there exists x p of x is the same as the disjunction between p of x1 or p of x2 or all the way to p of xn. This compound logical statement is true if one or more of the propositions are true. The only time this compound logical statement is false is when all of the propositions are false. Like in this case. Sometimes we can specify the domain in the quantification statement. Like this. Here is the domain and here is p of x. The translation of this quantification statement in English would be the square of a negative real number is positive. This statement can also be written using the conditional statement inside the quantification, like this. For every x, x is less than 0 implies that x squared is greater than 0. Here, the domain must be specified by writing x is in R. Let's take another example of domain restriction with the existential quantifier. There exists y greater than 0 such that y squared equals 2, where the domain is the set of real numbers. The domain restriction here is y greater than 0. This statement is translated into the English language as there exists a positive square root of 2. 
This statement is also equivalent to there exists y such that y is greater than 0 and y squared is equal to 2. Notice that with the universal quantifier, the equivalent is an implication statement, while with the existential quantifier, the equivalent is a conjunction statement. We've reached the end of this lesson. I'll see you in the next video.